You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to the Sports Coma's Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q, your host. We got DC co hosting via Skype. And we're going to cover this very nice game that we watched uh, yesterday. New Orleans Pelicans were able to knock the Houston Rockets in the head, 115 to 113. Of course, not to blow or toot my own horn, but I did call that game. I gave confidence to the Pelicans this time around. And, uh, of course, we're going to get into it. So, without further ado, bringing DC in. How you doing, my boy? Can't complain at all. You seen that game the other night? Yes, I did. And we're going to give a round of applause to the Pelicans for that win. And to the fans and people out there and our supporters out there that are joining us today on the Pelican Post Game Report. This is podcast 141, 141 on this January the 27th, 2018. That's right. And like I said, we'll, in today's podcast, 141, we'll cover with stats, facts, breakdown, and interviews. The Pelicans win over the Rockets, 115 to 113. We'll have Elvin Gentry's. Uh, commentary as he chimed in at the post game. Anthony Davis also chimed in at the post game. We'll also speak about in today's rundown brought to you by the www.depositlifestyle.com. Not just a website, but a lifestyle. So check them out. On the rundown, we'll t- go over the injury report for the Pelicans, all of the injured Pelican players, including the newest one who joins the uh, injured list, and he's done for the year, y'all. That's right, it's official. That Anthony Davis's running buddy, Demarcus Cousins, uh, has a left Achilles tendon. The, the tendon is completely severed, which means that his season is over. And usually, an Achilles injury of that sort usually takes anywhere between six to ten months of rehabilitation. Wow, so that's a, crazy! So a man. massive blow for the New Orleans organization. Winners of four in a row. Winners of seven of the last eight and rolling big wins, historic victories. Demarcus Cousins breaking records all over the place. Anthony Davis and uh, ten and four in January, man. Excellent, excellent play from the Pelicans. We'll also get into that. Then the next thing, of course, now that we digested that massive, massive issue, the next thing is what happens next. What's the next shooter drop? What do we do? Is the question that a lot of the Pelican faithful want to know. What do you do? And uh, we'll talk about that. Maybe we can. Maybe some of the guys off the bench, perhaps, that we've been talking about all season long. Maybe it's time for those guys to get some more chances to see what they can do. So, but we'll talk about that. And then on the back end, in the second segment, we'll preview the upcoming match this uh, upcoming match Sunday night in the Smoothie King Center against the LA Clippers as they come to town. Blake Griffin uh, and Austin Rivers makes his return here as well. So. Without further ado, let's dive into a very spectacular game from start to finish. 115-113 affair. And the game as the Pelicans' top score was uh, was, was Anthony Davis with 27 points. DeMarcus Cousins had a triple-double day. Of course, he finished with 13 rebounds and 11 assists. And the Pelicans uh, won, did masterfully, had 66 points in the, in the by halftime against the 53 points of uh, the Rockets. They were shooting them out the gym and until the Rockets started catching fire late. The kudos to the Pelicans. They did not collapse in the third quarter. They scored 24 to the Rockets, 27. They were cognizant, but the Rockets went on the tear uh, in the fourth quarter and ultimately brought the game very close 
uh, with 33 points. The Pelicans uh, held to their second lowest total of the game, 25 in that quarter. New Orleans handed Houston their first loss of the season when the trio of Chris Paul, James Harden, and Clint Capella are all in the lineup for the Rockets. Prior to the loss, Houston was 19-0, and so that's very encouraging. The Rockets were held to just 12 of 36 for 33% from three-point range. That is also very spectacular. Usually a weakness of the Pelicans to defend the perimeter shot, not this game. Trailing 35 to 34 with 929 remaining in the second quarter. New Orleans closed the half on a 32 to 18 run to take a 13 point advantage into the break. The Pelicans opened the second half, outscoring Houston on the 12 to 4 run to take a 78 to 57 lead with six minutes and 40 seconds seconds remaining in the period. Largest advantage of the game was that 78 to 57 lead. Houston crawled back out. They crawled back in the game, outscoring New Orleans 23 to 12 to cut the deficit to 10 points heading into the final quarter. Trailing 104 to 96 with four minutes remaining, Houston scored eight unanswered points to tie the game to 236 remaining. Five unanswered points for the Pelicans made it 109 to 104 with a minute and 52 seconds remaining. But the Rockets punched back, scoring five unanswered of their own to tie the game. Where at a minute and 17 seconds, New Orleans then made one final stand, scoring four unanswered points on two straight possessions to push the lead to 113 to 109 with 15 seconds remaining, a lead that Houston could not overcome. And that ultimately served in the final 115 to 113. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes and the discussion on the game, we got Coach Elvin Gentry. You go getting hungry again, huh? Yes, yes, yes indeed. Uh, and, uh, and here's a DeMar, uh, well, he, he's going to speak about DeMarcus Cousins' situation. And even though he had a big win, but it took, we had a big loss as well, uh, losing uh, DeMarcus Cousins' big boogie. So here's Coach Elvin Gentry with his take on it. Alvin, can you update us on the status of DeMarcus? Right, this, um, this is Achilles. Uh, he'll get an MRI. We'll know the severity of it tomorrow. And I can we just know that this is Achilles. So we won't know the damage and what's going on until uh, he gets to the MRI tomorrow. How tough a blow is that considering how you, the way you all play tonight and finish this game off? Uh, tough. I mean, you lose, you know, one of your key players and it's always, you know, really tough, but, you know, we just got to keep pushing on. I mean, obviously he was an integral part of everything that we do, that, that we do. and, uh, you know, to beat a team like Houston and, you know, he's playing great basketball and and, you know, they pissed CP off by not putting him on the all-star team, so he took it out on us. So, uh, you know, I just thought it was a real good win. You know, we played great basketball, and then they went with a smaller lineup that uh, switched everything, so it slowed us down a little bit from the standpoint of playing with the pace that we wanted to, but we still found a way to come, come away with a win, and that was the biggest thing. Does it give you an indication of what this team could be? You guys can compete with the best teams in the NBA when when healthy. And when yeah, healthy. I mean, we, we we thought that anyway, you know. And uh, as I said, we played against the Golden State Warriors and had big leads and couldn't finish the game. And tonight, you know, we took a step in the right direction by having a lead, uh, giving it up, but then finding a way to win a game. So I thought it was uh, it was fun. I mean, can you speak to the I guess going through this team and not knowing what the Marcus was. Like, well, like I mean, obviously, soccer. when you don't, I mean, he is. He's, he's extremely important to us. So yeah, we're we're, we're scared about it, uh, and I, I I'm I feel horrible for him. You know everything that he's done and what he's uh, tried to do this year for us and what he's made himself and the improvements in all areas uh, that he's made. You know, on and off the court, it's just been great. So, you know, I don't want that to happen to a guy that's, you know, trying to better himself, and all of a sudden, you know, you know, like I said, I, I hope it's not anything, you know, that severe. But you know, when it's Achilles, you know, you just never know. So, yeah, all of our guys feel terrible about it. Alvin, can you update us on the status of Demarcus at this point? Um, this is Achilles. Uh, he'll get an MRI. We'll know the severity of it tomorrow, and I can just know that this is a killing, so we won't know the damage of what's going on until uh, he gets to the MRI tomorrow. How tough a blow is that, considering how you, how you all play tonight and finish this game off? Uh, tough. I mean, you lose, you know, one of your key players, and it's always, you know, really tough, but, 
you know, we just got to keep pushing on. I mean, obviously, he was an integral part of everything that we do. That, that we do. And, uh, you know, to beat a team like Houston and, you know, playing great basketball and, and you know, they pissed CP off by not putting him on the all-star team, so he took it out on us. So, uh, you know, I just thought it was a real good win. You know, we played great basketball, and then they went with a smaller lineup that uh, switched That's Coach up. Elvin Gentry chiming in. As you can see, he was quite somber with that move. Like, uh, he really – Really low energy interview from Coach L. As it's kind of hard to get excited uh, with the Marcus Cousins hurt, man. Right, it, it, but this is the thing, though. You know, mostly you kind of temper your temper your enthusiasm, but at the same time, you temper your depression. Uh, not so much on the temperament <laughs> of the depression, you know, to, <laughs> to try to see, you know, okay, brighter days ahead. You know why brighter days ahead? Because yeah. we got because we got Amir Asik off the bench. And we have a new group they call the Amir Asics in the bench. Okay, that's the new group. We're going to have to utilize this group. Okay, now obviously it's, it's, it's somewhat of some satire, but what you think about it, D.C.? Uh, well, I would think uh, the lead singer or player would uh, have to have been and had a, at least Omer. a few solos. Omer. Oh, yeah, before they just go on tour. I mean, uh, has he even had vocal training? <laughs> You know, I, Let's not get I, twisted. I, I, Let's not, I heard band, the band and played. You know, the band and played before the game. A lot of times, you know, uh, I seen I seen the band playing, but uh, I, I ain't never seen a mirror, man. So I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> okay, so you know, okay, let that satire, a satire aside. Let's dig into this. Okay, uh, we'll talk about the in, the really crushing blow of losing Demarcus Cousins. Right, it's obvious. Uh, one of the uh, the overlying fact over this game. Okay, you beat the Houston Rockets in a regular season matchup. Now you go one and one so far in the two games that you played this team. In the long run, that really means nothing because Boogie, when you want to see this team in the playoffs, because you might see this team in the playoffs. If you get to the playoffs, you damn sure gonna see this team in the playoffs, and you need all you guys. Losing Demarcus Cousins now, the way they did toward the end of the game was hard now what do the pelicans do let's well, move into this left, man. <laughs> trying to tip in the ball and that's the thing that we you know you're looking at the box and he made a play man he, he made did a play too he did he did the pelicans in this game you know they played pretty well they shot 46 percent. i mean 53 percent, 50 minus well 53.7 minus well 54 if i round it off 54 percent versus uh, houston's 46 they shot 41% at the three-point line versus 33% by Houston. So they out they outshot them in the field, in the field, uh, through the field, through the three-point line. They even actually had uh they hit 16 to 21 for 76% from the free throw line, where the Rockets were 29 to 34 for 82%. They out rebounded the, the Rockets, they out assisted the Rockets by 14 assists, they out rebounded them by nine assists, they out uh fast, but well, let's see, out. Point in the paint, they dominated them in point in the paint, fifty six to thirty eight, and they did have sixteen turnovers in this game, but for uh, twenty opposition points, forced Houston's hand, uh, thirteen turnovers for twenty one opposition points, so they basically neutralized that advantage. And then the box scoring, not to take away from everybody else, for the uh, Anthony Davis, they had more of a uh, balanced stat line versus what Houston had when they were perennially dealing with Chris Paul, who was having an outstanding night. 38 points, eight rebounds. They had James Harden's uh, really pedestrian 23 points for James Harden. He was one of nine from downtown. Assists, yeah, 11 assists. 27 points from Eric Gordon off the bench. He was the bench. And then if you look at the stats for the Pelicans, Andy Davis, 27 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, five blocks. Then you had uh, behind him, Drew Holiday, 21 points, seven assists, five rebounds. Then DeMarcus Cousins had a triple-double, 15 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists, in the game as well. And he had three steals. He leads the teams in, in, in steals. He also is the team leader in steals. That's a big fat, a lot of fact that nobody really knows. Each one more have had finished with 13 points. Darius Miller off the bench had 20 points off the bench, six of 10 from downtown, six, 11 from the field. He was excellent. And that's the, he, all, all of the scores that were in double figures for the Pelicans. Of course, uh, moving forward and looking at, this obvious. Yeah, uh, forget about about Liggins, man. He 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 dropped the crucial eight points. He did. He, he didn't did. quite make the double figures, but those eight points were were critical, man. They were critical because he was 
perfect in his game. And I mean perfect, statistically perfect. He played 19 minutes in his game. He was three of three from the field. He was two of two from downtown. He had uh, he had a couple of assists in his game. He had pretty good rebounds. One really big steal in his game as well to finish with eight points. And we've been and yelling to we've been yelling. Guess to, what? We've been yelling to the top of our loans for them to get his guy an opportunity to play. You know, right. so now that he now that we see him in here, now that Demarcus is hurt, we need to start paying attention to who we got. Because I mean, they say trade, trade. Oh yeah, let's work out a trade. But who do? Any of nobody, anybody in the league want that you have that's not a part of the big three. You're not gonna move Etwan more. You know he's a major part of what you do. You definitely not gonna trade Darius Miller because you really like what I he think does. You could. I think you could trade uh, Etwan more if you're getting something of a good value back. I don't know. I don't, we, I don't think. I, yeah, I don't know. But, but, but that's all you have outside your assets, but. I tell Darius you what, Miller can't go anywhere, man, because what he's doing is, is very hard to find. Right. But well, listen, we just hold that thought. We're about to go back on it. We're about to go into our first break. When we come back, when we come back on the other side of the break, we'll get more into that. So hold that thought. We'll cover other topics, what we do with DeMarc, what we do without DeMarcus, and we'll preview the other game on the other side of the break. You listen to Pelican, Post Game Report. Stay with Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash i dash view I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We're going over the spectacular New Orleans win 115-113 over the Houston Rockets at the Smoothie King Center Friday night. Sold out crowd, 18,000 plus in attendance to watch that game. Big ups to everybody. Come out to enjoy such a wonderful game. But then toward the end of the game, the heartbreak with DeMarcus Cousins. We'll delve, delve into that uh, in just a second. Um, we're going to play Anthony Davis in, in just a second. Let Anthony Davis thoughts because it's pretty interesting to know what his thoughts on what, ha- or what uh, happened with DeMarcus Cousins after the game to see his friend land on the, on the ground. And basically, when most Pelicans fans seen that, him land on the ground with his heads on the ground, his hands on his head, we knew that it was this was going to be one of those situations that this could change your season dramatically. Now it's a two man game. Could and the question is, what do they do? It's going to be very difficult for you to replace the twenty-five points a game. It's only several other guys in the NBA that is that scoring more points than Demarcus Cousins. Seven of them. We have one of those guys on the team. His name is Anthony Davis. Those other guys are guys like the Greek Freak, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook. I mean, you're talking about the NBA's elite here. 
that's just above DeMarcus, averaging 25 points a game, 12 rebounds a game. It's just amazing. He even leads the team in steals. He he has 5.4 assists a game. This guy does it all. That massive amount of production will be missed. So where it can't be made up by one guy alone. You're going to have to do a team effort. But let's before we delve into that, I'm going to let D.C. speak his mind. But first, let's hear what Anthony Davis had to say to after Gavin. the game. What do you kind of feel like? Uh, no, I haven't had a chance. Uh, I'm not sure I didn't see the play. So, um, just waiting here. What does it say about this team to be able to match up against the Rockets and, and come out again and win and this kind of atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, we just keep fighting. At the end of the day, uh, no matter who's on the floor, no we want to compete. Um, I think God stepped up. Um, you know, DeAndre, especially, excuse me, putting pressure on Kevin James um, and Chris, and just making it a little bit, a little bit difficult for him. Um, other than that, you know, our guys, you know, stepped up and both ended the floor and were able to come out with this win. It's a great team. You mentioned, you mentioned you just mentioned DeAndre for him to be able to contribute the way he did. He also made a couple of big baskets as well. Just what did you think about the, just the performance overall? Play well, guys? play well. I mean, uh, he's known for the defense and he's uh, did a great job tonight. And then you know when he able to throw in a couple of threes as well, um, make some plays offensively. Um, it's a bonus for us. So uh, try to keep it going. How did you describe maybe the mixed emotions of seeing this line of coach <coughs> so brilliantly and win a game like this at the same time, not knowing what you know what the rest of the season holds for one of the guys? No, just keep going. Um, that's all we can do. You know, it was a great win, but we're not sure what's going to happen with the market, so we just got to keep going. I mean, they never got up, honestly. Um, you know, we can't, you know, keep our heads down and just pray. You know what I mean? You just got to move on to the next game Sunday and, and try to go out there and do the same thing. And how frustrating is that? I know it's how close this game looks to be. Oh, yeah, we were just getting it. We were just figuring everything out. That's the tough part. Um, like I said, man, we just got to keep going. <laughs> we got to keep going and just keep finding a way to win. Um, you know, keep going with our defense. But, you know, we're more than capable of doing something. That's, 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 there you go. That's the Marcus uh, Cousins Ready buddy, for, uh, Anthony uh, Davis, uh, chiming in uh, saying, they asking him, what do we do in – AD shrugs his shoulder and, and says, we got to keep going. We can't stop, man. We're on the mission. And, uh, you know, we lost a guy and we just – the team has to step up and we just have to keep playing to the best of our abilities. And I agree with AD wholeheartedly with that one. Uh, let's go to D.C. now. D.C., what are your thoughts on what Anthony Davis says and your thoughts on the DeMarcus injury, uh, period? Um, I think I wouldn't expect him to say anything else, man. That, that's what he's supposed to say. That's the mind frame. You want to see the leader of the team in. And they definitely have to keep going because even with DeMarcus Cousins out, you still have a talented enough roster to be able to contend and, and make the playoffs. And who knows, man, what happens once you get there. So AD is definitely going to have to show a lot more uh, responsibilities and take his game to the next level. Um well, maybe not the next level, but he, he already next level. He's just going to have to do more. Um, he's already doing a lot, so I think it's going to be putting a lot on him. But we need to get a lot more of uh, these guys on the bench, man. Like you say, oh, oh, Ashik in the bench, you know, uh, <laughs> definitely going to have to play, play Sheik Diallo. You're definitely going to have to play Omer now. Um, everybody should get some time. Um, we, we have competent players on our bench. We need to see what they can do. Now is the time, man. I mean, you can't hold nothing back and try to uh, go with a certain favorable lineup. You have to give people a chance now because you have a big hole in DeMarcus Cousins, man. So that's all hands on deck. Ain't no one player going to feel that. You're absolutely correct. The bench scored 39 points uh, that's good. against the Houston Rockets. They actually out def- outplayed their bench. And it is that's a good effort. Well, and Liggins tossing in eight very important parts, like you said earlier. Dallas Darius Mirror with his twenty points as well. Uh we still got uh, three Liggins other Liggins a guy wasn't playing. This is probably the second game he plays since he's been here. Why yeah. are we not playing this guy? I don't understand why. You gotta ask the the uh Elvin Gentry one about that one. Also about Sheck Diallo. What could Sheck do for you? Uh, I think Shaq could do uh, pretty he can do what Dante Cunningham's doing. I mean, I don't think Cunningham's doing anything that particularly well where Sheik Diallo can't see any minutes. Think, 
So I mean, I Sheik Diallo, Diallo, Amir Isaac, these guys should should be sending at least some minutes. Amir Isaac is the backup center. He has to see some time. Uh, and then you look at guys. You may mention off break about Mike James. We don't know what Mike James right. could do. We knew what he did from Phoenix, Lee but you can't tell me that the Mike James can't come in, get, come in and do and be one of your quickest penetrating guards that you don't have. He could be what your Manel Nelson used to be when he was young. He could be right. a penetrator, and he could also knock down a three. It's mind-boggling. Why I don't understand why he's not getting in, not two or three minutes, just to see what the guy looks like. Right. I mean, uh, he's a complete wild card, man. What I mean, what if this guy comes in and he plays at a starter caliber level or from the bench? You know, you're out there against other teams' second unit, and he's seeing he's going to see a step down in the level of, uh, I guess, defense that that he normally sees. I mean, you don't know what you can get from him, but uh, I, I have to chalk it up to maybe they're acclimating him to the system. Um, I, in basketball, I don't usually see it really taking sh- that long. Are they, st- are they acclimating Czech Diallo and Amir Asik to the system? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't make no excuses for that. All right, let's let, let, okay, I know. Let's let's move. Now, but just likes point guards, so I mean, it's, you don't it's like this one because the man got a ten day contract. Good, good God, when you gonna finally play him on the final day of his contract? I mean, let's let's. <laughs> Let's move forward here. Let's talk about some more stuff. What's the next shooter drop? They're going to be signed. He ain't going nowhere. Well, I mean, obviously, they're going to get another exemption because the Marcus Cousins is done for the season, according to reports from ESPN. According to the website, the the Pelicans.com website says that he's done for the season because you can't get more official than that. What's the next shoot to drop here based on a limited amount of cap space, the limited amount of personnel that they can actually move? I don't think anybody wants Dante Cunningham or Jameel Nelson or Ian Clark. You know, maybe outside of Davis Etoine and Rondo, Moore is pretty much the only guy. Etoine Moore, maybe Darius Miller, perhaps somebody is you know could see see something in him. But do you I would, I would you finagle Darius with Miller. those guys? Would you remove what what is is I don't I, I I wouldn't put nothing past Dempse. But what's your opinion on that? I think we definitely make some type of move, even if it's just a bunch of um, signings uh, with with unsigned guys. Like we're gonna do a lot of shuffling, I think there. Um, I hope hopefully we make a trade like a guy like Etwan Moore. I think is someone is a, a, a guy other teams will want. Um, if you have you're looking for a good guy to come off the bench or a, a nice shooter that could possibly start at a shooting guard, um, I think you could get something for him. What you could get, I don't know. Maybe you free up a cap space. Maybe we need to start thinking about next season and make moves that will put us in a position to grab a potential free agent to take the team to the next level uh, next season. Or they can go the opposite route and start thinking about trading uh, draft picks and stuff like that. To I'm try against to get that. A, other I'm, player to I'm severely against that. Season. I'm severely against that because, A, I got a general manager that's on a one uh, a, a do-or-die situation. This is he to get the team where they go. No, you had your we, – we, we, for the last three years, we put up with it. The third year, the last two years, injuries, injuries. This year, injuries. And you've basically run out of time. This, this, The call was made by the administrators to keep these two guys, meaning Demps and L Gentry, in place. Uh, solidarity reasons, despite the fans' outcry, the fans, it was no doubt about it, the temperature of the fandom, of Pelican fandom, wanted L Gentry out of here, and they wanted Dell Demps, who hired them, to go too. You know, but Don Benson made the call to keep both of those guys in place, and now they are in the skillet burning. And then, I, I mean, we're going to spend another minute on this topic before we move on to the preview of the Clippers matchup, but this is the thing I'm saying. When we talked last night and we when we watched the game, uh, Friday night, and we heard about the – we seen DeMarcus Cousins go down, and you say, that don't look good. Your comments was, and we got two minutes to discuss this, was blow the team up. And I was like, blow the team up? Explain your your, your thought process to the fans about what you was meaning by blow up the team. It's interesting what you were saying. Break you, it down. You you keep your core, man. And a, a lot of these guys – Which are, are? Would be Drew Holiday, um, AD, and DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, so you Everybody, give, give Cousins the deal. Yeah, okay, everybody sure. outside of that is is uh, expendable. Um, you could you could use that template to try to build for next year. Like whatever they do this year, to be honest, I mean, are we gonna beat the Golden State Warriors this year? No. Uh, the best we could possibly hope for 
is in the first round of the playoffs that we make it out of the first round. That's pretty much the best we could hope for. You know what I'm saying? Other than some, if AD's going to turn into Michael Jordan all of a sudden. But um, my comments were basically based on that to build the team, uh, I guess tear the team down this year, to build it up way better next year than, than what we have right now. Because we have a lot of bad contracts. And if we Thank you, dangle Dale some Dimps. of the players we have in front of some people, maybe we can get rid of some of these bad contracts by giving up, I guess, what looks like uh, some of our quality pieces away from our core. Absolutely. Um, it might be if this – I, I, if the team is one and done in the playoffs, it could be the same result. You know, we even know Drew gonna... Holiday, man, you could think about him being expendable. That was the one that you put up in there that I was like, "What? You would trade Drew Holiday?" And we spent, you know, I, would, for... I wouldn't want to, but I mean, what, what, you know, what's the best for the future of the team? You know, I don't think AD or Demarcus Cousins would like that very much. But what can you get back for him? You know, and uh, how does that? set your team up for the long term. It, well, it's hard to say because based on, you know, the, the, the thing is when you got two embattled people like Jim J and uh, L, Dell Demps on basically playing for the, their uh, coaching and executive lives for the, for the tip for the franchise. I don't want to give them the power to give up few future assets when they might lose their jobs. And then the next guy coming to be severely hampered because of the foolishness and the idiocy of what the rest of these guys were doing here and well, dimps dumb contracts. But let's, let's kind of move past that because we're running case, out of time. Man. Right, right. That's true. <laughs> let's move past that. Let's get into this Clippers matchup. The Clippers are coming into town. Of course, the all time matchup, the Pelicans lead that matchup 27 to 24. The last five games, Pelicans are three and two against this team. The last 10, they are four and six against this Clipper club. And of course, the loss to the Clippers back in 2010 snapped the 14 game winning streak against the Clippers dating back to April of 2007, which had been New Orleans' longest streak against any one opponent. So the Clippers stunk for a long time before Chris Paul got there. New Orleans clinched the first ever Southwest Division championship against the Clippers back in 2018. And uh, with a 114-92 win at home, New Orleans held the Clippers to eight assists uh, in that game. Fewest assists by any opposing team in franchise history. New Orleans also won seven of the last 22 meetings with the Clippers. In their first meeting of the season, DeMarcus Cousins scored 35 points to go along with his 15 rebounds and five assists. Andy DeJavis chipped in with 25 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, and a couple blocks. Drew Holiday added 18 points. Blake Griffin scored a team-high 26 points for the Clippers in the first meeting with New Orleans. DeAndre Jordan had 12 and 14. Former Pelicans guard Austin Rivers scored 19. He was on fire in that game. The Clippers for 23 Pelican turnovers in the meeting back on 11-11 resulted in 33 points for Los Angeles. Elvin Gentry, of course, he's 17 and 9 against the Clippers. Doc Rivers 20 and 14 against New Orleans. So, and a lot of like a lot of connections too between these franchises. L Gentry was the head coach of the Clippers back in the tw- from 2000 and uh, 2003 had amassing a horrible record of 89 to 133. Gentry was also assistant coach for the Clippers during uh, the 90 and 91 season. Was associate head coach under Doc Rivers for the 2013 2014 season. So these guys know each other. Demarcus Cousin, DeAndre Jordan were post teammates on the 2016 Olympic team. They both won gold medals. Austin Rivers was drafted by the Pelicans back in the 2012 draft, appearing in 165 games, averaging seven points and two rebound, uh, two assists a game. Pelican assistant coach Fred Vincent held the same position with the Clippers from 07 to 2010, as did Robert Pack in uh, the same capacity. Pelicans, Sheik Diallo was originally selected in the second round by the Clippers before being acquired by New Orleans that draft night. Jameel Nelson and Clippers Darnello Gonario was the teammates in Denver. Pelicans assistant coach Chris French was a member of the Nuggets coaching staff during the 2016-17 season. Clippers head coach Doc Rivers coached for the coach uh, guards Rajon Rondo and Tony Allen in Boston. All three were part of the 2008 championship team. Pelican associate head coach Dave, Darren Urban began his professional coaching career on Doc River staff in Boston. So with that said, duh, let's move into the uh, meat and potatoes of the matchup in which <laughs> don't, hurt you, don't hurt yourself, bro. In which the New Orleans Pelicans average, of course, 111 now. Of course, we, we expect these numbers to drop and they're giving up 110, 48%. And they're shooting 48.5% from the field, rebounding 43 rebounds per game, 26.5 assists, five blocks, 7.5 uh, steals a game. Winners of four in a row, eight and two in the last 10 games. Wonderful stats. The Clippers coming into this game, they are 24 and 24, 10 and 13 in, in away games 
107, might as well say 108 points a game. They average, give up 107. They shoot 46% from the field, rebound about 43 flat. They are they average about 22 assists per game, five blocks a game, six, uh, actually eight steals a game. They won one, and they're seven and three in the last 10 contests. So let's get it straight. The Clippers, seven and three the last 10 contests. Even though they just came off a three-game losing streak, they lost to Utah, Minnesota, and Boston before beating Memphis Grizzlies by nine on the 26th. So uh, going into it, D.C., we got about a minute and a half left. Give me a prediction on this game, who wins and why. I think the Pelicans go ahead and take this one. And the reason I think that, I think they're looking at their comrade who fell um, and DeMarcus Cousins, and they're going to be motivated to come out and continue their strong play. Huh? Win one for big cuz, huh? Yeah, man. I think they definitely win this game. Cause, uh, just riding on that emotional roller coaster, um, feeling the ups and downs of that uh, down because he's gone, but up because you want to win for him. So right. I definitely think they go out and take that game against the Clippers. It's going to go down to the wire again, be another nail biter. Okay, well, this is the rock. We're going to give you the the, uh, the Pelican post game report, injury report. Uh, Alexis Jenka, of course, we know about his right knee injury. Tony Allen's left fibula fracture. DeMarcus Cousins now on the lift with that left ankle, left le- left Achilles wrap rupture. Solomon Hill, left hamstring. Tim Frank Jackson's right foot fracture are out. And Charles Cook is a G League transfer who's not active in this game. The, pr- the probable starting lineup coming to this game for the Pelicans, Rajon Rondo, of course, at the point. Two is Drew Holiday, averaging about 18.7 a game. Rajon averaged about seven points a game with seven assists. Uh, And then the small forward, of course, Etuan with the three-guard rotation. Etuan Moore is there with 13 points a game uh, on the the thing. And then Dante Cunningham slides into where Anthony Davis is. It was supposed to be. Well, we know this is predictable. This is what El Gentry does. Uh, he goes small of anything, y'all. He, he goes small. Dante Cunningham is probable. We'll start there averaging about five points a game, four rebounds. Too small. Then Anthony Davis, of course, he slides to the, the, the number five position. I don't like him to play that position because he, he, that's a position you see. He, get, he gets hurt. He right. He gets hurt a lot when you play him at the five. Gentry don't understand, but he's desperate. Uh, of course, Anthony Davis, 26 and a half points, 10 rebounds, two assists. Now, of course, we got about a. 30 seconds left in the podcast. My prediction is I'm going to rock with the Pelicans. Of course, Pelicans as an organization have had a pretty good run against the Clippers at home. I expect them to continue the trend. Of course, win this game and, and keep it moving forward. Uh, we won't see the effects of DeMarcus Cousins' injury really until a few games after that when the competition start getting a lot, a lot thicker. So, uh, thank you for listening. We got to a whole the- starting uh, lineup on the injury yeah, we do. A lot of stuff. So hopefully some of those guys can make it back. The whole team, man. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for listening to the Pelican Post Game Report today. Please go and support our sponsors in the descriptions. We'll, uh, link below. And once again, check out our show every Monday and every Friday on our social media family, Twitter, Facebook. Forget ESPN thank you for listening. Yeah. Get straight sports talk Ow. from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks cubes and pyramids check out the posh lifestyle.com that's life spelled with a y p-o-s-h l-y-f-e-s-t-y-l-e.com for all your health needs so get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle clear clean great tasting filtered water we're all thirsty for it but in the u.s alone An estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. 
providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 